All right, I thought I'd answer some questions about how I gesso my sketchbooks and why I do it and when I do it and when I don't. <laughs> um, so, and I, I'm gonna, I need to gesso some any, anyway. So over the years, listen to me, over the years, I've probably been just, I don't know, two years. <laughs> Um, I have just started to figure out the quickest way to do this because I used to just paint a, a, a spread and then, you know, decide do I want to gesso the next page or don't I? And so um, where I am now is it depends on the kind of sketchbook and what I want to do with it because, you know, I have lots of them. So, like, if I'm using uh, for, for this watercolor sketchbook, this is the Strathmore. I was doing these kinds of paintings. Um, I need to do a walkthrough on this, but I this is all aqua gouache and gouache and it's watercolor paper. So I did not just sell these because I knew I was gonna do, I wanted to keep this sketchbook for this kind of composition and th this kind of style. I just wanted to discipline myself, which is, you, you, and this one's a little different, but, um, but I wanted to just say, okay, Suzanne, just practice this style in this sketchbook. All right, so for this, I did not gesso it. Now, this one, which is also a watercolor sketchbook by Moleskin, and I'll put the links to each of these in the description. Um, so this is watercolor paper, and I did gesso most of these pages because, see, I'm doing a much more like um, layered approach and there's I'm throwing a lot at this so there's acrylic there's aqua gouache there's ink in some cases this is oil pastel so when I know I'm gonna throw a lot at it even if it's watercolor paper I will gesso the pages so this is almost completely gessoed that page isn't but anything where you see like all this stuff like just layers um, you know, like here we have oil pastels and all kinds of yumminess. Um, even, let's see, did I, yeah, I did gesso these to, because I actually I had something behind here, you can kind of see it, that I gessoed over. And then I ended up making a class out of these called Chubby Florals. And I did another one here. So yeah, most of this sketchbook, now here's an example of a spread that is not just so this is an old spread back when I was playing with patterns, maybe three or four years ago, and I didn't even know about gessoing pages, and I wouldn't have needed to because this is gouache. But, and same here. So see the difference? This is a good example. This one is gessoed um, because there's layers of paint, and here's some, looks like Neocolor crayon and ink, and this one is just gouache, um, painted on watercolor paper. So same here, this is, this is just not a lot of media. So I think what it comes down to, maybe the best way to describe it, is that if, if I'm gonna use a lot of media, then I gesso the pages. If I'm gonna just use gouache, like here, I just paint on the watercolor paper, all right? So that's for this one. Oh, see, and what I've decided is I'm gonna fill the rest of this with these kinds of things. So I've already gessoed these pages. I think I went to the end because this one's almost done. And that way when I'm out, um, you know, if I wanna take this with me, like I've got a trip coming up, I can take it with me and everything's already gessoed with, uh, ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I gesso here in a minute, but I wanted to talk, talk about uh, some other things. So it, what it, the gesso does is allows you, and this is just, well, actually I take my Nova color gesso and I put it in this, but the Liquitex Basics um, gesso is just fine. And it allows you to take pretty much any sketchbook. Like this is just a, I think this is like a five, $5, four by six creative mark from Michaels here in the U.S. It's a, it's a cheapie. This is like a, a true sketch pad, like it is a little heavier. I, I would say don't do something that's really thin. Let me see if this will tell me. Um, this feels like maybe 80 pound. So 
you know, don't do like a day timer. I mean, that you could, you could. I know people do it. People take um, books that they buy at the Goodwill or old books and just so the pages. But um, in this one, I guess I just decided to do the one side and I haven't done much with this in a while. But the pages are gessoed with uh, colored. I just mixed gesso and paint. Um, anyway, so the gesso really gives you flexibility to get something inexpensive. Now, you probably know by now my favorite brand of sketchbook is uh, Moleskin. Now, there are lots of good ones. It's just, you know, I don't know. You start with one and you kind of fall in love with it. Like my, where is my, my sketchbook that, you know, started the whole thing, the, the sketchbook class. It's so full somewhere around here, but this is the second one that I just painted. Um, I did another YouTube on painting the cover of it. But what I want to show you is how instead now, instead of, saying, well, I'm gonna gesso some pages and not gesso some pages, and then you have to be more careful about not getting the gesso on your other pages. It's easier to just um, gesso this way. So let me show you the two kinds of sketchbooks that I use for moleskin. This is the watercolor, meaning the paper is watercolor paper. I still gesso it like I just told you. Then they have another line, and you have to be careful. I'll put the links, but it's the art journal collection. It's not, um, and they're usually, this one was red, this one is black. I just got this, this size, I've never done this size. And this one's called the medium, believe it or not. This is called the large, and then there's really big, and then there's really small. I might try the smaller one sometime. And but the art journal collection is a little bit heavier paper. Um, I just took the label off it. I think it was 110 pound. So it's made for sketching. So you can feel, hear that? It's not like a, a regular moleskin. So you wanna make sure you get the art journal one. And then I'll show you, yeah, I did. I did a sketch. So. I'm gonna see if I can stick to it. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking I wanna fill this one because I really want to improve my landscape um, paintings and just my style. So I'm, I'm thinking of now of dedicating this sketchbook to the landscape sketches. So I did this little sketch. I wanna do them really loose of, of, of a scene here in Florida. And I did not gesso this page, but here's what happens. It's fine, you can tell it, it's held it up fine, and, but you find that you're painting and the paper is just soaking the paint up. And it's just this feeling like you can't, I get this feeling like I can't get the color I want or I have to keep using layer after layer after layer. And um, so I decided, I wanted to try it, but I decided that for the rest of these, uh, I am going to do a watered down, a very light, this is a very light coat of gesso on these pages. And I'm just gonna get the thing gessoed so that it's all ready to go. Um, and then I decided I'm gonna do that same thing on the rest of the pages here because I'm not really gonna use these for my gouache, um, bouquets and things I'm going to use landscape and even if I did I can still paint on these gesso pages so uh that's what I'm going to do all right so let's do it what I'm going to do is let's see I've gotten that far is this is just palette paper but you can use any paper there's nothing special I just have this handy and it kind of keeps separation between the pages so I just put a, a sheet in on that side, like so. And we'll do this at the same time because the thing with gessoing is you're, you know, you're getting your brush all, okay, this is done, so this is the next page. You're getting your brush all filled with gesso, so you might as well, uh, you know, let each page dry and then move on. So, and then I put, 
another one like so, just so that it doesn't stick to the pages below it. You could even take another half of one. I have these everywhere because this is how I use them. And kind of do it, let me do it like this so they fit in the camera. And I was doing the ones, these last night as we were watching TV, it was a, you know, what I would do is gesso a spread and then uh, work on a, you know, I was painting in a sketchbook. Well, usually I have about three or four going all over the floor and I, as one dries, I pick it up and do the next one. And then just take a, this is a cheapy hardware brush. You know, I wouldn't use your better brushes for gesso because it's, you know, it's, there's no point, really. Um, household brush even, it's also faster. And I do want it a bit watered down, so I just dipped my brush in water. And I'm looking for a, I don't want like a pooling type consistency for the water. I just want, I mean, for the gesso, I don't want it runny, but I don't want it super thick. And I could, but I want a light coat on these. All I'm trying to do really is keep the paint from soaking into the paper. So I don't need a thick coat for that. I'm not trying to create texture. You know, sometimes I use gesso to create like some yummy texture, you know, where you gesso something and then, uh, you know, take the back of your brush and make lines in it and all that stuff. That's not the goal on this particular use. This is just to seal the paper, if you will. And by the way, uh, I might try this on some pages. I've not done it before. You can also seal your uh, paper with matte, with a medium. Like this is Nova's matte medium. I like matte. I don't like glossy looking paintings. It's just a personal preference. So you could also do that. I'll have to, I'll have to, I think I just did that. Yeah, I did it on a canvas. So we'll see how that the matte medium, see how that feels to paint on top of versus gesso. It's gonna be smoother. Gesso has a little bit of tooth, is what its texture is called. Like uh, when people refer to dipping in water, to uh, watercolor paper, it has tooth. It basically means that like when I'm rubbing this paper here before I've gessoed it, here you can hear, it just sounds smooth. But if I go to one of my gessoed pages, do you hear the difference? Wow, listen to that. Totally different. So we're adding tooth. And that is something that you may or may not want depending on what you're painting. You know, you might say, no, I want smooth. In which case you could try sealing the, the sketchbook with matte medium, which would be nice and smooth. I'll try that in another video. So I'm just not being fussy. I'm not trying to go, you know, in a particular line or direction. I'm just trying to get coverage. This is a great, you know, I like to talk about my classes about things to do to move your creative practice forward, even on days you don't feel good or you're not feeling inspired or you're not feeling creative or maybe you're even sick and you're not so sick you're in bed, but you don't feel like doing anything mental. This, these, are, these are like great things that feel good to do. And then you'll be so glad you've got them done when you are feeling creative. You'll have all these gessoed pages. And I'll do this, sometimes I'll get out some sketchbooks and then I'll get out my watercolor papers, you know, next to it and I'll just have a gesso half hour. And, um, I'll just take, like, this is probably only going to take 10 minutes to dry. So since I, that, this is a crappy brush and I don't care about it, it's already rusting, I'll stick it in the water. And I don't know if you can see that. And then leave these here. You know, go do something else. And whenever it's convenient, come back. Uh, so you can see how that, you can just get the, like this one I have not gone forward and done that. But I'm not into this sketchbook right now. I'm kind of excited about the new one. I know. I don't necessarily finish one before I start another one, but that's okay. I did finish. I have finished a couple. I finished actually three or four. That's pretty good. 
So, um, yeah, that's gessoing. Let me see if I, because I've been getting questions. I think I answered your questions. You were just wondering how I gesso it. Do I water it down? Um, and when do I gesso? When don't I? All right, well, if you have any more questions, you can post them in the comments. Otherwise, happy creating.